blowing at Sunday, my September back. 11th, 2016. And on this fateful I anniversary, does this mark the beginning of the end for Hillary Clinton's presidential campaign? Is this the October surprise three weeks early? Fainting Hillary Clinton. Let's roll the clip. The media and Clinton campaign cover-up of sick Hillary's medical emergency has kicked into high gear. Look at this footage of Hillary leaving an event in New York, leaning against a pillar, her aides hold her up. Again, they tried to keep the press away, but someone got it on tape. She's falling over, she's swaying. More people come in, try to hold her up. She clearly falls to the ground as they help her into the van. Here's the clip from another angle. Again, you see Hillary leaning against a pillar. She's swaying. She can barely stand up, falls off the curb. More people have to come in to help her. There she falls down before she's helped into the van. And here's yet more close-up footage of the incident. Does this look presidential to you? And almost immediately, the Clinton campaign and the media swung into high gear with the cover-up. This was the headline from CNN. Hillary Clinton not feeling well, leaves 9-11 event early. And they just regurgitate what the Clinton campaign told them. During the ceremony, she felt overheated, so departed to go to her daughter's apartment and is feeling much better. They report Secret Service agents helped her into the van. They don't even mention the fact that, as you can clearly see in the video, and we thankfully got this from citizens there on the ground. They kept the mainstream media away from the incident. You can clearly see from the video, she's swaying. She's leaning against a pillar. Even though she's being held up by two or three people, she still falls over. Yet nowhere is that information contained in this CNN report. Then again, they just blithely quote Clinton as saying she was feeling great. Yeah, it doesn't look like she's feeling very good to me. They then go on to quote Michael Morell, former CIA deputy director, who told CNN's Jake Tapper that Clinton looked fantastic and had high energy. Really, does this look like high energy to you? This is the BS we're being fed by CNN, by the mainstream media, in the aftermath of what is clearly a medical emergency, a fainting event, and they say, oh, she just felt a little unwell. This is why 94% of the American people distrust the mainstream media, because this is the kind of crap insulting our intelligence that they come out with on a regular basis. And lo and behold, the leftist media is already demonizing anyone who questions fainting Hillary as a sexist. When in reality, fainting Hillary is unfit for office. And all the media outlets who said I was a conspiracy theorist for questioning her health, even as top doctors said the same thing, well, they all owe me a massive apology. Within, Within minutes of this occurring, the media was out regurgitating Hillary campaign talking points about how she just felt a little unwell. She overheated. Even though Fox News' Rick Leventhal said that it wasn't a particularly hot day in New York. This is a complete cover-up. The video footage clearly shows that Hillary is incredibly sick. She's unfit for office. And this is not a conspiracy theory, as the media has been claiming for the past month. That was the YouTube video that went up a couple of hours ago, and I never thought that when I first reignited this issue with the viral video that got over 4 million views back over a month ago now, that this would become the main presidential issue for Hillary Clinton. I thought it would be amongst them, but this has now become the prime issue that could make or break Hillary Clinton, and the media cover-up is in high gear. We'll get more into it after the break on The Alex Jones Show Live, Infowars.com. The Alex Jones Show Sunday edition, 15th anniversary of September 11th. And we've had another fateful incident today. You wouldn't know it looking at Facebook and Twitter, which has completely censored any hashtags relating to this, despite the fact that it's the biggest news story in weeks, if not months, 
Hillary Clinton visited a 9-11 memorial event in New York City. Video later emerged of her stumbling, swooning, swaying, being held up by numerous people, falling to the ground as she attempted to get into a van. Again, you wouldn't know that from what the media reported and from what the Clinton campaign said. They said, initially, she felt a little unwell, she felt a little overheated, despite the fact that it was the coolest day in New York or amongst them for a month. She just felt a little bit unwell. She went to her daughter Chelsea's apartment in New York to recuperate. 90 minutes later, she was fine. She was smiling. She was saying what a beautiful day it was in New York City. What they didn't tell you was the fact that citizen journalists filmed Hillary Clinton basically fainting, collapsing. And you wouldn't have known that if they were able to carry out this cover-up. For 90 minutes, they told the media nothing. Hillary Clinton is followed around by this pool of journalists now everywhere she goes. They're on her campaign plane. But even they, the sycophants, the softballers, were, quite, were kept away from Hillary Clinton for 90 minutes while they tried to run this cover-up. They thought they could get away with it. As I reported there in the video, which you just heard, they had the pro-Clinton mouthpiece media firmly on their side for the first couple of hours. They regurgitated the lie whole cloth. She felt a little unwell. She overheated. She went to Chelsea's apartment. She came out 90 minutes later. She was perfectly fine. What actually happened, if you watch the video, which they thought would not come out, despite the fact we now have it from two different angles, again... She's leaning against a bollard. If you look at the clip in high definition, some weird metallic object appears to fall out of her pant leg. Now, that could have been something that broke off the bollard, but again, absolutely bizarre. She's leaning up against this bollard. She's got two people holding her up. She's swooning. She's swaying. She then falls over the curb before she even gets to the van. She then falls down again. The Secret Service have to stoop. They have to pick her up. She's clearly collapsed. And yet, what do we see the media reporting? This is what NBC News reported. Just to give you a little example here. Hillary Clinton abruptly left a 9-11 memorial service in New York City after apparently feeling ill Sunday morning, but she was later seen looking okay and saying it was a beautiful day. A statement from her campaign after she left the memorial said, quote, Secretary Clinton attended the September 11th commemoration ceremony for just an hour and 30 minutes this morning to pay her respects and greet some of the families of the fallen. During the ceremony, she felt overheated, so departed to go to her daughter's apartment and is feeling much better. That is how NBC News reported this video. They didn't even mention any of the details, the quite clearly shocking details that are seen in the video. They merely said, oh, she was seen after looking perfectly okay, said it was a beautiful day. End of story. End of discussion. Let's regurgitate a press release from the Clinton campaign. And that's going to wrap up the cover-up for NBC News again. Absolutely brazen lying by omission. You want another example? Look at the Associated Press. Look how the Associated Press reported on this shocking footage of Hillary Clinton collapsing. This was the Associated Press's headline. Clinton, I'm feeling great, was overheated at 9-11 event. How on planet Earth can that represent a fair portrayal of what you see in that video? Again, this is the Associated Press's headline. Clinton, I'm feeling great, was overheated at 9-11 event. Not a single reference to the actual detail of the video. I mean, it gets even worse. Look at Politico. Look how Politico reported on this shocking footage. Quote, video posted on Twitter shows a woman that appears to be Clinton briefly swooning before being helped into a van. Okay, number one, they then even confirm 
that the woman in the clip is Hillary Clinton. That's how castrated our mainstream media is, despite the fact she's surrounded by the same secret service agents that have followed Hillary Clinton everywhere for the past year plus. They then even confirm that the woman in the clip is Hillary Clinton, never mind accurately describe what's in the actual footage. She briefly swooned before being helped into a van. Well, that doesn't describe her almost falling over, leaning back against a pillar, being held up by two people, falling over the curb, being picked up by two more people, falling over again. Doesn't quite cover the details there, does it? No. She swooned. She just felt a little bit unwell, just overheated a little bit before she was helped into a van. She collapsed. And they don't even say that it was Hillary Clinton in the footage. Absolutely unbelievable. They went on to report that they had to ask the Clinton campaign if the footage was authentic. This has circulated on Twitter for hours. It's clearly Hillary Clinton. She's surrounded by the same Secret Service agents. And they still have to ask if the footage is authentic. Did she even swoon? Was it even Hillary Clinton? Maybe that's just a big conspiracy theory. Again, we've been called conspiracy theorists for over a month after we reignited this issue. Those people are all going to have to eat their words tonight. No honest journalist can claim that this is a conspiracy theory ever again. And again, you go back to the overheating explanation. We saw the same thing in Ohio earlier this week. Of course, Clinton had a massive four-minute-long coughing fit during her speech in Cleveland, Ohio. Of course, before that, we got the footage of the gurney, the hospital bed, being wheeled out of an ambulance that was in the convoy in the motorcade of Hillary Clinton. Again, the mainstream media refused to report on that. She has the four-minute coughing fit. She has another coughing fit on the plane with the journalists. And what do the media do? How do they report on this? Well, they say it was due to high pollen counts. Allergens in Cleveland, Ohio on that day were particularly high. And that's what explains it. Well, no, we actually looked at the weather reports and all the allergen counts for each different type of pollen were all low or moderate. They got caught in a massive lie. They've been caught once again regurgitating the Clinton campaign that she overheated on one of the coolest days in New York City for the past month. This is out the Washington Examiner. Clinton overheated on coolest day, just 75 degrees, breezy. Adding to the mystery of Hillary Rodham Clinton's health episode Sunday, requiring her to be whisked away from a 9-11 ceremony at New York's Ground Zero, was the temperature of just 75 to 77 degrees, one of the coolest in the past month. Weather Underground said it was 75 degrees at this time, a day after it reached 94, when it was also extremely muggy in downtown New York City. So this is one of the coolest days in months, 75 degrees, it's in the morning, you have a breeze, little humidity. Again, this is what the Clinton campaign spokesman said. During this ceremony, she felt overheated, so departed to go to her, her daughter's apartment and is feeling much better. So again, the media regurgitated this without question. It turned out almost instantly to be a brazen, flagrant lie, just like the high pollen counts. The explanation that Hillary overheated is part of this ongoing cover-up. We'll be back on the Alex Jones Show after the... Well, it's been a particularly bad weekend for Hillary Clinton. Of course, on Friday night, we had her labeling Trump supporters a basket of deplorables, basically saying that millions of American people were racist, homophobes, Islamophobes. She had to walk that back. She had to apologize for that comment. And she probably thought that that was the worst that it would get in terms of scandal, in terms of bad optics for this weekend. But no, fainting Hillary collapsed. Her campaign tried to cover it up. They didn't know that a video of the incident was out there. They had a Secret Service personnel break protocol 
an immediately crowd around her, again, not staying right by her side, but standing in front of her to try and block the media or anyone with a cell phone camera from filming this footage. Again, half the media is still in cover-up mode. You have the likes of CNN, NBC News refusing to even report on the details of the video, at least at the top of their stories. You have blatant Clinton front groups like Think Progress reporting mainstream media sensationalizes incident and braces Clinton health conspiracy. And then you have some actual honest mainstream media. And again, as I said at the start of the show, no honest journalist can claim this is a conspiracy theory ever again, because that's what they've been calling me. That's what they've been calling Alex Jones, Infowars, Breitbart, Drudge, Hannity, anyone that raises this issue for the past month, for the past six weeks, that we're conspiracy theorists. They threatened outright the mainstream media just a few days ago after Hillary had her coughing fit in Ohio, pressuring them, threatening them, publicly shaming them not to cover, cover Hillary Clinton's health issues, saying that this was a fringe subject, that anyone who dared to invoke this, even report on it, was again in league with the racist alt-right, the fringe conspiracy theorists. Well, now it's a central issue in the presidential campaign. And at least some of the media are being honest about it. I mean, they can hide it no longer when the evidence is that blatant, that in your face. This is out of Politico, came out just about an hour ago. Clinton scare shakes up the race. Physical weakness caught on camera turns health conspiracy into a legitimate campaign concern. Of course, we told you all along that it wasn't a conspiracy when you had top doctors Neurological experts, people like Dr. Drew coming out and saying the exact same thing that we were saying. They were publicly shamed into silence. Dr. Drew lost his show. They tried to threaten the media out of reporting on this. And, you know, I was on the Alex Jones show, I remember, a couple of weeks ago. And I was asked, in fact, I was asked on several different shows, how's this going to play out in future? Where do you see this Hillary Health conspiracy going? And I said words to the effect of, well, she's going to have more fainting fits. She's going to have more coughing fits. They're only going to get worse. And that this will continue to catapult the controversy. And that's proven accurate today. So now in the face of outright evidence that she has serious health problems, some of the media are being forced to be honest. Again, this is Politico. Hillary Clinton's health, long the obsession of conspiracy theorists, you know, people who can rationally judge evidence for what it is and not just dismiss anything based on the word of Hillary Clinton's own internist, her own physician. Remember, the mainstream media used that for weeks as evidence, like, like it was some kind of objective fact when it wasn't. Long the obsession of conspiracy theorists emerged Sunday as a legitimate campaign issue after Clinton nearly swooned and stumbled. Nearly? <laughs> Even in this admission that it's a central presidential campaign issue, they're still lying in the first paragraph. Nearly swooned. She fell over twice. I mean, watch the video. It's not difficult to see. Clinton nearly swooned and stumbled at a September 11 commemoration, underscoring the sense that some of the sure thing candidate is teetering at the worst possible moment. And again, Scott Adams, the creator of Dilbert, gets into this in another article, which we'll get onto. Just the sheer optics of this 9-11 anniversary in the face of our enemies. She's swooning. She's stumbling. She's falling over. Not very good optics. The Politico article continues. The incident captured on cell phone video showing the wobbly Democratic candidate being lifted into the vehicle by her aides after leaving a memorial service at the site of the World Trade Center attack comes after two weeks of tightening polls that have seen Trump close to within striking distance nationally and in some battleground states. And it capped off arguably the worst 48 hours of her general election campaign that began when she called Trump supporters deplorables. So you have Politico admitting that now it's a central campaign issue. You have the Washington Post 
Imagine my shock doing exactly the same thing. And this article was written by Chris Kiliza. Now, this is the same guy who on September 6th, just five days ago, put out an article entitled, Can we just stop talking about Hillary Clinton's health now? This issue is beyond ridiculous. That was five days ago he put out that headline. Two days after that, he put out this headline. Why I wrote about John McCain's health in 2008 and don't think we should write about Hillary's health now. Again, he wrote that article three days ago. He's looking a little bit stupid now. But in one sense, you have to admire his honesty because this is the headline of Chris Kaliza's article in the Washington Post today. Hillary Clinton's health just became a real issue in the presidential campaign. So here's a guy who completely poo-pooed it as little as five days ago, said it was a conspiracy theory. Now even he admits. And you have to respect his honesty because most of the mainstream media aren't honest. He's admitting that it's a core issue in the presidential campaign. The article states Hillary Clinton falling ill Sunday morning at a memorial service on the 15th anniversary of the September 11 attacks will catapult questions about her health from the ranks of conservative conspiracy theory to perhaps the central debate in the presidential race over the coming days. Again, this is in the Washington Post. This is the guy who dismissed the whole issue as a conspiracy theory as little as three days ago. Again, he quotes the Clinton campaign's cover-up statement that she just felt overheated and now feels much better. He says, quote, what that statement leaves out is that, A, it came 90 minutes after Clinton left the ceremony, and B, reporters or even a reporter were not allowed to follow her. And that is key. They covered it up. They kept the reporters away. And C, the temperature in New York City at the time of Clinton's overheating was in the low 80s. Well, actually, it was in the mid to high 70s, so it was even cooler than that. A heat wave over the eastern United States broke last night this morning, so the heat wave was over. But they're still blaming the heat wave, even though it was one of the coolest days in New York for the past month. But credit to Chris Kaliza, he's one of the few honest mainstream media journalists who now admits this is a central core issue of the presidential campaign. It could hot cost Hillary. Well, for the last month, the mainstream media has called myself, has called Alex Jones, Mike Cernovich, Stefan Molyneux, Sean Hannity, Matt Drudge, Breitbart, anyone who raised the issue of Hillary Clinton's health, a conspiracy theorist. They laughed at us. They said it was a non-issue. They said it was debunked because, oh, Hillary Clinton's personal physician said she's perfectly okay. Well, it wasn't debunked. And now those people have got egg on their faces. They all owe us apologies. Chris Hayes, MSNBC. Rachel Maddow. They all owe us apologies. And we're going to get into that issue again here later in the show. But first, I want to tell you on the subject of Rachel Maddow about the Mr. Rachel Maddow special at InfoWarsStore.com. In response to Rachel Maddow's laughable attack on free speech and the liberty movement, again, she went on this 20-minute screed about how evil the alt-right was, we are happy to announce the Mr. Maddow special at InfoWarsStore.com. For a limited time, get 20% off Survival Shield X2 nascent iodine 15% 15% off Super Male Vitality, 15% off Deep Cleanse. Now, Rachel Maddow was kind enough to plug all of our products during that run, so we're celebrating that by giving you even more great discounts at InfoWarsStore.com. Again, allowing us to break the electronic Berlin Wall of media cover-up, which we've done with this Hillary's Health issue. Now it is the central focus of her entire presidential campaign our video reignited the issue five six weeks ago now it's at the core of this race for the white house and we couldn't have done it without your support without you getting the products survival shield x2 20 percent off 15 percent off super male vitality 15 percent off deep cleanse all available right now at infowarsstore.com The Rachel Maddow special. Go there, support us, support the expansion of this independent 
media network. We're not funded by giant pharmaceutical companies. We're not funded by George Soros. We're funded by you, the listener. So please support us by getting the products at InfoWarsStore.com. Now we're going to go back to the Hillary's fainting issue. And by the way, Hillary's health is finally trending on Twitter. We've broken through that censorship. Hillary's health trending on Twitter. Now we're going to get to Alex Jones' special report on Colin Kaepernick. Of course, this is not a free speech issue. You've been lied to about Colin Kaepernick. Here's Alex Jones with his special report. I am beyond angry. I am saddened and I am ashamed that my nation, the United States of America, that your nation is absolutely filled with entitled, spoiled brat babies like Colin Kaepernick. If you look at the numbers, he makes more than $19 million a year. He's got a six-year, $114 million contract, a $12 million signing bonus, tens of millions of dollars every year in sponsorship. And he sits there whining and bitching and talking about how America is the most evil, racist country in the world. Talk about insanity. Talk about ignorance. But it gets worse. I've held my tongue in the last month during this controversy because it's so disgusting, I don't even want to follow it. But when I see the NFL come out and threaten to fine players, that we're going to talk about in a moment, who want to wear 9-11 commemorative shoes for all the people that died, the firefighters, the police officers, people of every race, color, and creed, many of whom were heroes trying to save lives, and the NFL threatens them, but then basically promotes what we see on the left coast with the San Francisco 49ers, and now we've got the Seattle Seahawks and others coming out saying they're going to link arms today and all take a knee in support of the spoiled brat baby from the 49ers. Think about that. And then you have to do more research and understand this is all Ford Foundation, George Soros financed garbage. This is all part of the Black Lives Matter movement. It's all part of the divide and conquer in this country. Our country has some serious problems and we've worked through many of those. It was England, Europe, and then the United States that led the way globally to end slavery. But those facts never get into the minds of the young people in this country because the system is designed that they never understand that. So that we're all busy fighting with each other while the globalists engage in their larger takeover of the planet itself. Avery Williamson, the starting linebacker for the Tennessee Titans, had been reached out to by first responder groups and was planning to wear a specially made pair of tennis shoes to honor those that died on 9-11, including the hero, firefighters, and police officers. But the NFL told him, listen, we'll fine you, maybe even suspend you. You better not do that. But the media and everybody says it's a great thing uh, what Black Lives Matter and others are doing. And that's why Apple is giving him millions of dollars. And George Soros giving him 30 plus million dollars. And uh, the Ford Foundation, 100 million dollars, is because this is what the global corporatists want. This is their plan. They're giving us a national culture of having a bunch of entitled, spoiled, rotten babies who are filthy rich, who live in big mansions, bitching and complaining all day, and then saying all the problems in the world are caused by white people, which itself is incredible racism. Rebranded Al-Qaeda, ISIS, is now spread to 20-plus nations. Criminals in the Obama administration are on record funding them and working with Saudi Arabia to spread jihad worldwide. The criminal networks within our government that are working with Islam are the very same networks that are pushing and promoting the fact that it's okay to piss on the 3,000 people that died on 9-11, on their families, and on those firefighters and police officers that were heroes and marched into that death trap. I just cannot believe how shameful and stupid all the morons are that buy into this media hype. But again, whether it's the NFL or Apple or ABC or NBC or CNN, they all act like this is completely normal and a good thing. And the new pastime is hating on a country and hating on free market that gave these football players and spoiled brats their smartphones, their Lamborghinis, their $50 million houses, the jet airplanes that take them around the world, that mine the big diamond earrings they wear 
And all the little communist kids I see out protesting against America with their smartphones and pulling up in their nice cars. I mean, you people are crazy. Go to North Korea. Go to Venezuela. Go to Cuba. And then ask yourself, why are big foundations and big universities and big media promoting socialism and communism and racial division? Because they don't want you to have the American dream. Because the New World Order can't compete with the American system. It can't compete with free market. John D. Rockefeller, the founder of that evil dynasty, famously said, competition is a sin. We want to shut down free market. And a hundred years later, they've almost done it. In closing, I want David Rockefeller and Lord Rothschild and George Soros and Bill Clinton and Hillary and all the rest of the globalist trash, the Saudi royal family, all of you to know something. The communist Chinese president that's attacking Donald Trump, uh, the corrupt socialist pope, you have failed. The planet is waking up. They're aware of what you're establishing. They understand you want to make us poor with planned global austerity and Agenda 21. And your blueprint for global enslavement is public. The planet is aware of it. And you have failed. Now, I'm going to turn this back over to Paul Joseph Watson, hosting the rest of this 9-11 special report live from London, England. That was... Alex Jones with a special report on Colin Kaepernick again. They made this whole issue. They tried to make it about the First Amendment. Well, he has a right to do what he wants. Don't you support free speech? Isn't that the bona fide ultimate pro-America position? Well, no, it wasn't about free speech. It was about him being a mouthpiece for debunked Black Lives Matter rhetoric about black people supposedly being oppressed in America again. A message that has been completely hijacked by George Soros, funding Black Lives Matter to the tune of hundreds of millions of dollars, a violent movement that has caused it's these co The race for president is probably over. This is an article by Scott Adams, the creator of Dilbert. Of course, he was on the show about a week ago. If you're following the breaking news, Hillary Clinton abruptly left the 9-11 memorial today because she was reportedly overheated. Her campaign says she is fine now. You probably wonder if the overheated explanation is true, and a non-issue as reported, or an indication of a larger medical condition. I'm blogging to tell you it doesn't matter. The result is the same. Here's why. If humans were rational creatures, the time and place of Clinton's overheating wouldn't matter at all. But when it comes to American psychology, there is no more powerful symbol of terrorism and fear than 9-11. When a would-be commander-in-chief withers, literally, in front of our most emotional reminder of an attack on the homeland, we feel unsafe. And safety is our first priority. Hillary Clinton just became unelectable. The mainstream media might not interpret today's events as a big deal. After all, it was only a little episode of overheating. And they will continue covering the play-by-play -play action until election day. But unless Trump actually does shoot someone on Fifth Avenue, he's running unopposed. That's Scott Adams again. He's an expert in psychology. His commentary on the election has been proven de deadly accurate over the past six months or so. Now he's saying that this event is the watershed moment for Hillary Clinton, the optics of it collapsing, withering on the 15th anniversary of 9-11. He's saying that wh whatever happens in the future regarding her health, she cannot recover from the optics of this moment. Now, I want to go back to the Chris Kaliza article. This is out of the Washington Post again. This is the guy who said just five days ago, can we just stop talking about Hillary Clinton's health now? This is the guy who just three days ago said why he wrote an article about John McCain's health in 2008 and doesn't think he should write about Hillary Clinton's health now. So he was one of these mainstream media hacks who was saying it was all a big conspiracy theory, there was nothing to it. Now he's completely reversed his position, as have, to their credit, some others in the mainstream media, not the majority. And he's now saying that this is the core issue of the presidential campaign. The article goes on. 
Whereas Clinton and her campaign could laugh off questions about her health before today, the, quote, overheating episode makes it almost impossible for them to do so. Not only has it come at a time when there was growing chatter with very little evidence that her health was a problem, but it also happened at a 9-11 memorial event, an incredibly high-profile moment with lots and lots of cameras and reporters around. But the issue is that Clinton kept reporters totally in the dark for 90 minutes after her abrupt departure from the 9-11 memorial service for a health-related matter. No reporter was allowed to follow her. Again, Clinton has this pool of sycophantic reporters that look like enraptured tweens meeting Taylor Swift for the first time, as he saw with the photograph from the plane earlier in the week. Even they couldn't get near to Hillary Clinton while she was having this episode. For 90 minutes, they covered it up. They held the reporters back. The Secret Service, and this is also being reported by the Washington Post, they broke protocol. Again, this is out the Washington Post in a widely circulated video of the Democratic presidential nominee's departure from the ceremony. Clinton can be seen leaning against a security bollard and then buckling and stumbling as her security detail helps her into a black van. According to a Secret Service agent who reviewed the video, the detail was clearly rushing and did not expect for Clinton to leave at that time. So again, they were panicked. They were trying as quickly as possible to get her out of there to the point where they completely violated their own Secret Service protocol. The former agent noted that it is against Secret Service protocol for the protected individual to wait for a car to arrive. In the video, Clinton is leaning against the bollard as the black van pulls up. It is also unusual for a detail leader to leave the protected individual side as Secret Service agent Todd Madison, who is, again, Hillary's mystery handler that seems to be providing her with medical aid as well, is seen doing in the video to open the van's doors. So again, they were in a complete panic, in a complete rush when this was happening, that they left the side of Hillary Clinton. They made her wait for the vehicle because, again, they were rushing to get her away, to get her some treatment. And again, they kept the press away. This is absolutely huge. Politico, Washington Post, they're all saying it has now become the core issue of the presidential campaign. Now, I thought it'd be, it would be one of the issues when I made that viral video just five weeks ago. Never did I think it would become the primary issue, and now people are openly saying that this is the beginning of the end for Hillary Clinton. And really, it all depends on the media. If we allow them to bury this, to claim that she had just overheated, when, again, it was one of the coolest days for the past month, you know, 75 Fahrenheit, 39% humidity. This wasn't a hot Sunday morning. It was relatively cool. Again, she's wearing these bizarre blue sunglasses. Some people say that they're to prevent seizures. I mean, the campaign has lied so much at this point that you even now have people claiming, and I don't believe this, but it's just, it underscores how duplicitous this campaign is that people will believe this. They think that the Hillary Clinton campaign sent out a body double after she collapsed as kind of a ruse to convince anyone, everyone that she was okay. That's the level of distrust that the public has in this campaign. And they openly lied about it. They didn't think that anybody had a video of this. They said she had overheated. She felt unwell. That's not what happened. She stumbled. She was swooning. She fell over twice. She had to be helped up. This is absolutely shocking footage, but it's been completely misreported or underreported by the mainstream media. And it's whether that's allowed to stick as to whether this becomes a huge issue in the days and weeks going forward. You will note that the never Trump media, the likes of Glenn Beck and the National Review Online, Hours, hours after this broke, you go to their websites, they had absolutely nothing on it. So it wasn't just the leftist media trying to cover this up. It was the never Trump conservative sellouts that refused to even 
mention it in the first place. So again, this is going to become the frame of this going forward, how the media tries to cover it up, because we've got some who are being honest and saying that this is the final straw. Again, no honest journalist can claim that this is a conspiracy theory ever again. Let's hit a few final news stories in the last couple of minutes of this hour. American Mirror reports, is Hillary's basket of deplorables critique her Romney 47% moment? Again, she was probably thinking that that was the worst it was going to get for her this weekend. She had to apologize for that comment, calling tens of millions of American people deplorable, racist, sexist, homophobic, xenophobic, Islamophobic. Of course, it was her policies in Libya that led to the displacement and deaths of millions of Muslims, yet she has the temerity to call Americans Islamophobic. You know, it was her administration with Bill Clinton that called black people predators. It was Bill Clinton that said, make America great again for his own campaign and for Hillary's 2008 presidential campaign. He used that very same slogan. But now, of course, he says when Donald Trump uses it, it's an outright sign of brazen racism. Again, he's been caught in complete duplicity once again. This deplorables comment by Hillary, she already had to walk that back before the collapse. Again, is this the beginning of the end for her campaign? Is that set to collapse? Almost 1,500 underage refugees arrived in Germany married, one fourth 14 years old. Again, some cultures are better than others. Passengers terrified on easy jet flight as deported migrant screams, death is coming 17 times. He also screamed Allah Akbar 29 times, and we will die nine times. And I guess the people who don't embrace that as cultural enrichment, well, they're just Islamophobic, they're just racist. Second hour with David Knight coming up. Breaking news at Infowars.com. Don't go away. Welcome back to the Alex Jones Show on this September 11th, 15th anniversary of the attack. I'm David Knight here for Alex Jones. You just uh, were listening to Paul Joseph Watson from the U.K., and of course, Paul was talking about what happened with Hillary at the 9-11 uh, commemoration services today, how she had to be taken out, carried out, how she was fainting. We have the video of uh, how that happened. That is very important because it's been obvious to everyone for some time that she has health issues. And I think the most important thing about this is how the mainstream media has spun, has covered up, has defended her. And of course, Paul Joseph Watson pointed that out in great detail. We're gonna look at something else in this hour. We're not gonna look at Hillary's health because Paul has covered that very thoroughly. We're gonna take a look at the health of our Republic 15 years after 9-11. We're gonna take a look at some videos because you know, uh, Donald Trump, took a lot of criticism when he talked about people who were celebrating as the towers came down. And we know that that happened. Maybe it wasn't thousands of people in New Jersey. There were people that were celebrating in New Jersey. There were literally thousands celebrating on the Islamic street, if you will, all across the Middle East as the towers came down. And he was essentially right on that. We also have uh, came up earlier this year in the debates. Remember Ted Cruz? Criticizing Donald Trump for his New York values. Remember how Donald Trump turned that around? Well, you know, Donald Trump seems to have amazing timing, doesn't he? Because at the same time, of course, th this is not a good week for Hillary Clinton. Not only did she have this validation of health concerns today at the 9-11 ceremony, but at the same time that Donald Trump was talking about the left and Democrats mocking Christians, we had Hillary Clinton doing just that at an LGBT fundraiser in New York City. She was talking about how half of the people that support Donald Trump are a basket of deplorables. That's me, despicable me. <laughs> I guess we need to put some kind of a despicable me trailer together, okay? We're the detestables. And of course, she is the untouchable. You can't touch Hillary Clinton, no matter who dies around her, no matter how many secrets are exposed around her, no matter what she does to documents, nobody can touch her. She is the untouchable. But we, we are the deplorables, the detestables, the despicables. And she walked that back a little bit. As she was validating on Friday night 
what Donald Trump had been saying during the day. And this is what Donald Trump said. He said, our media culture often mocks and demeans people of faith. All the time I hear from concerned parents how much harder it is for Christian families to raise their children in today's media envi uh, environment. Your values of love, charity, and faith built this nation. So how can it be that our media treats people of faith so poorly? And, of course, it's people of Christian faith who are treated poorly. If you want to promote a Sharia law system through Islam, then you get a place of honor on the podium introducing Hillary Clinton as she accepts the nomination. And how dare you criticize somebody like that? Because then you're criticizing a Gold Star family. Forget what Hillary Clinton did to the Gold Star families of Benghazi. No, that doesn't count. Only if you criticize Sharia Khan, who supports Hillary Clinton. You want to talk about a basket of deplorables, okay? These are the people who surround Hillary Clinton. So she's at an LGBT fundraiser talking about how uh, people who oppose her are deplorable. She walked that back a little bit the next day. She said, I shouldn't have said half. Yeah, she means all of us. And let me tell you something. In Hillary Clinton's political caste system, there are going to be real consequences for people. We've already seen how the IRS was used by Obama. Far more, far more. The amazing extent of how he used the IRS against his enemies far more openly than anyone has ever done. Remember Richard Nixon was impeached for trying to do that. Obama does it and get away, gets away with it. What is Hillary going to do to those of us who are despicable in her eyes? Stay with us. We'll be right back. We're going to show you some reactions to 9-11, some mocking of it. Unbelievable. Two planes, three buildings. That's what we mean when we talk about Building 7. And we're going to talk about not only the facts of 9-11 and the official conspiracy theory. <laughs> That's the one that absolutely... It's like the, the magic bullet official conspiracy theory of the JFK assassination. The lone shooter official conspiracy theory that I don't believe, that many people don't believe. That's where they coined the phrase to shut down any questioning of the official story. And we've been questioning the official story here, Alex Jones has, for 15 years. And we're going to take a look at the aftermath. You know, they said uh, they hate us for our freedom. That was what George Bush said. And as you've seen the meme, you know, I guess, uh, I guess they won. I guess they won. Uh, what do we have now? We've got the Patriot Act. We've got the TSA coming after us everywhere. Uh, you know, it's, it's the, uh, here I made a list, some of these things there. Patriot Act, the NDAA, indefinite detention without trial by the military. Oh, that, that came after 9-11. Uh, we got the NSA dragnet surveillance. We got the TSA. They give you a choice now. Would you like radiation or molestation with your travel? Okay? They don't hate us for our freedom anymore. People marvel at what we have become. You see, they always tell you, surrender your liberty for freedom. For I'm sorry, surrender your liberty for security, okay? And you never get that. You just become a slave. They've given us no-fly lists. Say, so no, you're not going to even travel at all. I can't tell you how you got on this list. I'm not going to tell you how you got off. I'll just tell you, you can't travel because you're on this list. And understand that it's going to go beyond planes, okay? The TSA is transportation. The T stands for transportation. It doesn't stand for plane, all right? For those of you who can't do the math, who don't understand that uh, uh, two planes are not going to take down three buildings and their footprints. We also got the uh, authorization for the use of military force. And, of course, we have a, an article we're going to talk about from BuzzFeed uh, that was written a couple of years ago. But it's something we should think about on the anniversary of 9-11, how they have used this and extended it year after year, how Congress has, as they have in so many different areas. Look, Congress doesn't do anything anymore. They abdicate all of their authority. They either give it to the president, who is writing executive orders and enforcing those through his bureaucracy, or they just turn over in broad strokes to the bureaucracy. And they say, you write the laws. You call them regulations, but you write the laws. We're going to give you the authority and the funding to do this. We're going to give you your own courts where you can accuse people of violating civil uh, laws, and they will not have any rights because it's not criminal. So the Bill of Rights doesn't apply because it's not criminal. So you, the EPA or the IRS or any of these people, you know, just come after people. They, you can say that they're guilty. They must then prove that they're innocent. You can write the laws. You can have the police force. That is what we have now across the board. But the authorization for the use of military force that was put into effect shortly after 
9-11 that has been used for all of these wars. It has been used to give us a perpetual war. Remember back in Vietnam, the, uh, the old jingle, one, two, three, who, what are we fighting for? Don't ask me, I don't give a damn. Next stop is Vietnam. Well, I guess today, you know, it could really be, uh, who are we fighting? And it's like, don't ask me. I've got a secret list. <laughs> I'll just kill whoever I wish. Because they keep extending this. They extend the wars. They extend the people who are on it. Even the House and Senate oversight committees don't know the groups that are on the list. So we've got secret lists about traveling. We've got secret lists of people that we're at war with. We don't have Congress declaring war. So what Ron Paul said at the time was like, you've got individuals who did this. You've got terrorists issue letters of uh, marks and reprisals to go after these people. Declare them as pirates. Put a bounty on their head. Take them down that way. But if we're going to go to war with an entire country, like Afghanistan or Iraq or Syria or Libya or add to the list, whoever you wish. If we're going to continue to go to war against these people, if we're going to assassinate people, uh, ourselves or whatever, we should have a discussion with the Congress if we're going to go after an entire war. If we're going to start dropping bombs on civilian populations with collateral damage. Otherwise, Put the bounty hunters out there. Go after these guys. There are people who could have taken them out much sooner than that if they'd put out uh, letters to get them, labeling them as pirates. That's the way that they handled uh, terrorists in the past. It's not anything new to have terrorists. But what they wanted was a perpetual war, and that's what they've gotten. And every year, every year, they have renewed this authorization for the use of military force to continue this madness. Now, as I was talking about at the uh, top of the hour, of course, it's not just Hillary's... Uh, Collapsing at the 9-11 memorial today, which uh, Paul Joseph Watson talked about in, in uh, great detail. And I'm not going to talk about that. I'm going to talk about some of the other things. As I point out, the health of our republic, which is gravely ill. It's in critical condition. Nobody is even calling for any treatment. Isn't that interesting? A political malpractice here. You know, we're in a state of denial about the condition of our country. Just as Hillary Clinton and her advisors are in a state of denial about her uh, condition. And we have this eternal war. What, what has happened with this? Okay, are we any safer 15 years on? Of course we aren't. They've gone into these countries, as I just point out, going after entire countries because they can go after whoever they wish. And then once they set these countries on fire, they start bringing people in. Who know that we've been dropping bombs on civilians in those countries. And now we see the fruit of this. Look at this uh, story that's on Drudge Today about Germany. They warn of more than 500 Islamic militants who could be capable of carrying out assaults, members of hit teams. We've talked about this before. But think about the fact that they brought in half a million in just one year, unvetted, from areas that we're at war with, Islamic terrorists. And I've said over and over again, if only a small percentage of these people are terrorists. So we, you know, 99% of them could be good guys. And if you have uh, 1%, that's 5,000 terrorists. 5,000 terrorists. Well, Germany is saying, well, we think maybe we got one-tenth of 1%. 1 might be terrorists that we've let in. We don't really know because we haven't vetted these guys. But now we're starting to pick up some chatter. So, yeah, that, that could be happening. Yeah, I think it's very likely that one in a thousand might have been bad. One in a thousand. And of course, there's other things we could do to address this problem, this humanitarian crisis, rather than bringing them in. The people who wisely, and many people on the left, wisely push back against a lot of these wars. And they knew that a lot of innocent people were going to be killed. But now they're trying to assuage their conscience by putting us at risk. By bringing these people in without even knowing who they're bringing in. And now we see Angela Merkel's government. And, of course, Angela Merkel is the harbinger of Hillary Clinton. She is what Hillary Clinton is going to become. Look at what's happening in France this last weekend. We had a couple of situations with suspicious cars. First, they found a car in front of Notre Dame Cathedral in Paris loaded with explosive cylinders and had been sitting there for quite some time. I think it was an hour with the flashers on or something before anybody even noticed. When they looked at it, it's like, oh, well, what are all these uh, canisters in here? Oh, they're explosive gas. Oh, <laughs> we better call the police. And then they found there was no detonator on them. But very suspicious, isn't it? And then just a day or so later, they find a similar thing in Marseille. Parked outside a Jewish community center. 
So now we've had two incidents about this, and now they've arrested a 15-year-old schoolboy, they say, over the one in Paris. Uh, are these dry runs to see how they react? Are these people uh, kind of like uh, Inspector Clouseau in terms of being incompetent? It's like, you forgot the detonator or what to matter, you know. I don't know what the deal is, okay? But if you're going to bring in people by the hundreds of thousands, by the millions, without vetting them from areas where you have been bombing civilians, uh, populations, understand that there are people all through the Middle East that just can't wait to bomb our countries. That's where we are 15 years after. That's the insanity of the Bushes, of the Clintons. That's what we're living after. They've taken our freedoms. They're exposing us to terrorism. Welcome back to the Alex Jones Show. I'm David Knight, your host. And of course, today's 15th anniversary of 9-11 and the commemoration ceremonies that were there at the uh, Ground Zero have been overshadowed in the media discussions by Hillary Clinton collapsing and having to be rushed out of the area. She was uh, there for, they say, an hour, hour and a half as uh, Paul Joseph Watson was pointing out, I, I looked at 75, 78 degrees is what it was there. About 40% humidity, 12, 12 mile per hour winds is what I saw on weather.com. She says she was overheated. I tweeted out on uh, my, my Twitter, it's Libertarian if you want to follow me. Uh, maybe I'm going to get the Secret Service coming after me because I said, hey, you know, we call that winter here in Texas, uh, 75, 78 degrees. If, if that's overheating you, uh, Hillary, if you came here, you would die. You know, our weather here is deplorable. That's a word she likes, deplorable. <laughs> They'll be taking you out in a basket. You know, you got the uh, half of uh, Trump supporters, she says, are deplorables uh, in a basket of deplorables. We'll be taking her out in a basket if she comes to Texas, if that kind of weather causes her to overheat. You know, for her own good, for her own good, I think that Hillary needs to be in prison. You know, she can get a lot of rest in prison. She can get medical care in prison. And that's where she needs to be so she doesn't do any more damage to our country. It'd be the best thing for us as well. Hillary needs to go to prison and get some R&R, &R, I think. Uh, but, you know, this has been something, talking about Hillary Clinton's health, that's been something that the mainstream media will not do. As a matter of fact, they push very hard against anybody who would question why she's coughing so much, why she's had so many obvious problems that we've seen at events, why she's kept herself sequestered. And uh, especially this last week, we had uh, Rachel Maddow coming after us. And, and to make fun of this, uh, she put up a bunch of our health products and read what was on the health products. It's like, thank you, Rachel. That's great. <laughs> Let people know because we know that you need iodine. We know that you need uh, these products for your health. We have a lot of specials that are at Infowars.com. We've got things like Water filters, air filters, you know, all those things that are just a conspiracy that you need clean water, clean air. Well, we got 20% off Alexa Pure air filters, 20% off Alexa Pure water filters. You know, in case uh, somebody is dumping something into your water and charging you for it, like fluoride. Or in case there's something like glyphosate, uh, Roundup, that is running through the uh, water supply system, going down into your groundwater if you're out in a rural area. Or just the runoff from all the pharmaceuticals that keep, get re keep getting recycled through our bodies and through our sewer systems that are not properly filtered out. Well, you can filter that stuff out with the right kind of filters. So we've got discounts off of those. We've got discounts off of storable food. 30 to 40% off InfoWars Select storable food. But, of course, that's just a conspiracy theory that you'd want to provide for emergencies. No, you wouldn't want to do that. But in case you're smart enough to understand that you do, we've got some great specials there. And we have put in a Mr. Rachel Maddow special at InfoWarsStore.com. In honor of Rachel Maddow, we put in 20% off Survival Shield X2 Nascent Iodine, 15% off Super Male Vitality, 15% off Deep Cleanse. Those are the products that she singled out to tell the public about, so we'll give you a discount. If you want to go there, read the reviews. I don't think Rachel's got one there, but uh, there's people who have actually bought these products and used them, and there's a lot of very positive reviews. Now, what do we see happening today? Of course, uh, we've got the 9-11 memorial going on, the 15th anniversary, and yet Mark Dice had a couple of interesting videos that I want to play for you. The first one here is about Comedy Central joking about 9-11. And as we look at this, and as we look at what's happened just on Friday, where we had Donald Trump saying, hey, you know, the media is mocking Christians, and then they mock him for saying that. 
And yet at the same time, you've got Hillary Clinton doing a fundraiser, an LGBT fundraiser in New York, where she calls those of us who attack her a basket of deplorables. And interestingly enough, she came back the next day, you know, let me read you the reaction before we go to that video uh, from Mark Dice showing you what the left thinks about 9-11. Uh, let me read you the comments that have gone back and forth because that happened on Friday. There's been some back and forth between the Trump campaign and the Hillary campaign has come back and doubled down on those remarks because we've got Stephanie Cutter, who's with the Hillary Clinton campaign, literally doubling down. She said half? No, it should be all. All of them are a basket of deplorables. But this is what Governor Mike Pence said. He said um, he was simply taken aback. He was speechless about it. He said uh, comments by anyone, including Clinton, uh, mean that such a person, quote, has such a low opinion of millions of Americans, they should never be elected president of the United States. He went on, he said, uh, there are many reasons from Hillary Clinton's cascade of corruption flowing out of the Clinton world around the Clinton Foundation, from her years as Secretary of State, her failed foreign policy record that I described again today, this is Governor Pence talking, that literally has resulted in large parts of the Middle East spinning apart, policies at home that really represent a continuation of the failed economic policies of this administration. All of those things, Governor Pence said, all of those things are reason enough that Hillary Clinton should not be president. But I do not have to tell you that when I heard of what she said last night at a fundraiser in New York City with Barbara Streisand, that her words, you could put half of Trump supporters into what I call the basket of deplorables, I was simply taken aback. Hillary Clinton believes that millions of everyday Americans who think we can make America great again are, in her words, deplorable. And she described them as irredeemable. Hillary, I've got news for you, said Governor Pence. The millions of men and women, thousands of which I've seen since I joined this campaign, but the millions of men and women who are coming out and supporting my running mate are veterans, members of the armed services, law enforcement, farmers, factory workers, coal miners, business owners, pastors, everyday Americans for whom faith is important and who believe the liberties enshrined in our Constitution. They are not a basket of anything. They're Americans, and they deserve her respect. Frankly, anyone who has that low an opinion of Americans should never be elected president of the United States. Absolutely right. So what did Hillary say? Well, Hillary came back and she said, last night I was grossly generalistic, and that's never a good idea. I regret saying half. I was wrong. And you can imply that, well, it wasn't really half. I shouldn't have said half, but uh, her, uh, one of her spokespersons, Stephanie Cutter, said, no, it should have been all. Just in case you didn't understand the uh, little sarcasm that Hillary Clinton had there, her staff made it clear. Yeah, it's all of us. But, of course, having somebody speak just before she accepts a nomination who supports Sharia law, that supports throwing the very people that she's raising funds from, the LGBT community, supports throwing them off the roof, okay? That's not deplorable, detestable, despicable, irredeemable. That's Hillary Clinton. And understand that Hillary Clinton really does sh support Sharia law. She spoke at a girls' school in Saudi Arabia run by Huma's, Huma Abedin, her, let's say, how do we describe Huma? Her close, her close associate, <laughs> who is always by her side. Um, Huma Abedin's mother runs a school in Saudi Arabia. And Hillary Clinton went there and said, you know, I want you to understand, we're not all running around in bikinis. In America, we're not all bad people. Yeah, some of us run around like her in a Chairman Mao coat that looks like an oven mitt. Yeah, not everybody here runs around in bikinis, okay? And she wants to put Sharia law in America. Make no doubt about it. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Welcome back to the Alex Jones Show. I'm David Knight. You know, Hillary Clinton's called all of us who oppose her, and that is all of us. Not half of us now. They've clarified that. She's doubled down on the remarks. First, she said half of them. Now she says uh, all of them, according to uh, Stephanie Cutter. She said, yeah, I shouldn't have said half, but there, it's all. Called us a basket of deplorables. I'm going to show you some things that have been done on Comedy Central, an ad from a mattress store that uh, Mark Dice picked up on here in San Antonio, That things that truly are deplorable, that are truly despicable and detestable, mocking the people who died on 9-11.
Now, I know that this has been used in a horrible way by our government. I've talked about that many times. We're going to talk about that uh, some more today. But let's understand the depth of human suffering that happened there. That is nothing to be mocked. And when I look at this, and I look at what Hillary Clinton is doing, you know, she has cried wolf, and her supporters have cried wolf so many times. Racist, sexist, homophobe, xenophobe. Racist, sexist, homophobe, xenophobe. I mean, it's like a mantra with these people. You go out on their, their demonstrations uh, against Donald Trump or whatever, you try to even engage them in conversation. You've seen the many, many videos that we've done here with our reporters at InfoWars. You cannot get them to say anything except this mantra of terms. And they've used it, cried wolf so many times that, you know, when somebody really is racist, it's not going to have any effect anymore. They're completely destroying these terms. That's why Hillary Clinton has to come up with a new term, like a basket of deplorables, because she's worn out these other terms. They have no effect, and it's a sad thing, because there really are racists out there that need to be called out. And so when they, they use these uh, pejorative terms so excessively, so carelessly, uh, and, and it's being used to, to censor speech. Let's understand how this is being used, okay? Anybody that wants to point out that our would-be empress has no integrity, that she has no accomplishments, that she ought to be standing trial instead of standing for election, then all they do is reply, racist, sexist, homophobe, xenophobe. Okay, so she has to invent a new term. Now, when I, I look at this, I look at the tactics of the left. I'm reminded of a, of a friend of mine uh, back in North Carolina. She grew up in, in Japan. And, you know, you look at a lot of, of suicides, and we're seeing a lot of suicides now from, from uh, students that we didn't see when I was growing up. People are in school. Why is that? I think it's because there is so much pressure to be a part of the group. They put so much pressure on you. The worst thing that can happen to you, these students think, is to be unlike the group. They want this herd mentality. They don't want to be, they don't want to stand out. You know, back in Japan, and, of course, Japan has some of the highest suicide rates in the world, especially amongst their students. And my friend used to say, there's so much peer pressure there. She said, it's unlike anything in America. But of course, America is getting much, much more like that because of people like the social justice warriors who pressure people and use these tactics to censor dissent and free speech. They had a saying in Japan, the nail that sticks up will be hammered down. And that's what they would do. They would rigorously punish anybody that wasn't like the group. And of course, in Japan, they have a very uh, homogeneous society. Everybody looks the same. They're all about the same height. Uh, I mean, it's, it's a very much physical appearance. It's very similar. And they have this regimentation down. And of course, that's one of the reasons why their emperor was able to rule them, to get them to do things. We look at why. I was just uh, last weekend, it's a week ago, I was in New Orleans. I was at the World War II Museum, the National World War II Museum. And you look at the things that they were able to get the Japanese people to do, to, even as they were taking over some of the islands. The people who were not involved in combat would commit suicide. They'd jump off cliffs. They'd throw their children off of cliffs because they had been lied to by their government, because they thought it was going to be the worst possible thing that could happen to them. You had the kamikaze pilots, and you had the uh, suicide, uh, the soldiers who would just rush against uh, superior uh, weapons and committing suicide. That's what governments want. That's what emperors want. They don't want you to see yourself as an individual that has value, that has dignity, that has freedom. They want you to think of yourself as a group, okay? Now, we don't have groups here that are that rigorously enforced by the left in terms of appearance. As a matter of fact, their genius is that they have turned this around so that, you know, you must be something that is outside of the norm in order to fit in. But make no mistake about it, you have to accept their mindset, their mentality, you know, when I look at uh, this, this saying that my, my friend had, that you have to be, if you are a nail that sticks up, you'll be hammered down. It always reminded me of, of what uh, the German philosopher Goethe said. He said, you're either hammer or anvil. And, you know, Hitler used that expression. He said, we're going to uh, 
take the initiative. We're going to control people. We're going to be the ones who enslave other people. But, you know, George Orwell turned that around. George Orwell said, well, you know what? The hammer eventually is broken by the anvil. It never goes the other way around. And so I would say to Hillary and those of you who are hammering America that we're an anvil. We can take it. And you're, going, you're not going to last. You can't outlast the anvil of the people that you are now calling deplorable, detestable, despicable, irredeemable. And think about how Donald Trump turns this around. I mean, it's, it's been absolutely amazing, his, his timing. As she was, he didn't do this in reaction to her. As she was doing this, he was talking about how Christians are being attacked. Our media culture mocks and demeans people of faith while she is doing that. While she is doing that. He talks about school choice. He talks about religious liberty. He talks about the dangers to all of those from a Supreme Court that is populated by Hillary Clinton. Okay, he talks about Common Core, the federal monopoly on education. He talks about churches that have been intimidated into submission. And you don't talk about how they intimidate people in school. Look at our church leaders, how easily they have been intimidated, giving them a carrot and a stick, saying, organize yourself as a corporation, a 501C. We will give you and your contributors tax deductions against income taxes. But if you speak out politically, we will destroy you economically. Well, thank goodness we've got a lot of people who haven't listened to that, who said this is in violation of the First Amendment. Bring it on. Let's have a court case. Pulpit Freedom Sunday. And so they recorded their sermons, sent them to the IRS. This movement is growing. It's been going on for several years. And guess what? The IRS didn't do anything. They call the IRS bluff, and the IRS is backing off because they want to be able, they don't want to have a court case that is going to make it clear to everyone that they have no authority. They want to continue. They want to ignore these people who are sending them their political speeches. They want to ignore them and not take any action because they know that's a very small, very, very small percentage of people. That's like 0.1% of the people. They can get the other 99.9%. It's probably less than point, a tenth of a percent. It's far less than that. They can get the other 99.999% of the churches to fall in line by their intimidation. But that would be blown if they ever did a court case. Either that or the hypocrisy of our government in saying that they follow the Constitution would be so obvious. Uh, it would, it would uh, probably bring that down. But I want to take a look at what's happening here on 9-11. You want to see something that is deplorable, detestable, and despicable. Take a look at this Comedy Central roast. This was picked out by Mark Dice. We're going to play that video, Mark Dice. I'll play you the despicable clip here in just a second that actually aired on Comedy Central. They thought that this was appropriate. They thought that this was funny. After the roast of Rob Lowe aired, all of the headlines are about how despicable the comments were about Ann Coulter, calling her everything from the C word to suggesting that she... Okay, hang on right there. We're going we're gonna to play the rest of this when we come back. And, of course, that C word, was that conservative? Because that's probably the worst thing they could think of to call somebody. We'll be right back. Welcome back to the Alex Jones Show. I'm David Knight on this last segment of our September 11th show, 15th anniversary of September 11. One of the things that we have to understand, folks, is that we cannot be shamed into censoring ourselves. No matter how many times they laugh at you or they tell lies about you or they stretch this out. And we can see this, of course, with Rachel Maddow, with the people who were saying there's nothing to see with Hillary Clinton's health. Look. Do what is right. Call them out when they're lying with an obvious lie. And don't let anything that they say to you shame you into doing this. I, I think that's the key thing. And that's what I want you to see from this, this video of Comedy Central that uh, Mark Dice is uh, exposing. I want you to see the reactions of the son whose father died in 9-11. And he even, even he laughs at a very cruel and tasteless joke about the people who died in 9-11. Why? Because he doesn't want to uh, stand out in the crowd. He doesn't want to be picked on. So he just goes along with this. That, to me, was one of the saddest things to see there. The saddest things. His father, a firefighter, who died 15 years ago, and he laughs at this crude, 
tasteless joke. We're going to play that for you in just a moment. But you know, the other thing, too, is when you're doing the right thing, don't ever apologize for it. Get a thick skin. It's one of the reasons why we've got the Mr. Rachel Maddow special. You know, Rachel Maddow thought she's going to shame us for talking about Hillary Clinton's health. So she took some of our products, like nascent iodine. So look at this. They're selling this stuff. You know, they're selling storable food and air filters and water filters. And it's like, you bet. We're not ashamed of it. It's the right thing to do. It's good stuff. Okay, we got 20% off nascent iodine. We've got 15% off super male vitality, 15% off deep cleanse. That's part of the Rachel Maddow Special. We've also got preparedness products at InfoWarsStore.com. 30 to 40% off InfoWars Select Storable Food. 20% off nascent iodine. 20% off air filters from Alexa Pure. 20% off water filters from Alexa Pure. We don't apologize for that. Alex supports this operation by selling the best products that he can find that address real issues that people need to prepare for in their life. Helping you to provide for your health, for the health of your family. We're not ashamed of it. We will double down on it, just as Hillary Clinton doubled down on her attempts to shame and censor people for being Christians. At the very same time that Donald Trump is pointing out that we don't have to be ashamed. And we're not going to be ashamed anymore. But let's take a look at this Comedy Central uh, tape that I've been teasing here with uh, Mark Dice analyzes this. Let's go back to that uh, clip. Oh, and by the way, the comedian that he's talking about... Pete Davidson, his dad was a firefighter who died in the September 11th attacks in the Twin Towers. Pete Davidson's here. I'm appalled that people would come here and make jokes about the sacrifice Pete's heroic father made on 9-11. Now he's referencing the earlier joke about someone else making fun of the fact that this guy's dad got killed on 9-11. So he, again, he's setting up his joke where he appears to be sympathetic. He appears to be appalled, which everybody should be. And then listen to this. It is not the roast of Pete Davidson's father. That was in 2001. Wow. This wow. isn't the roast. Of That's amazing. Keep running that. Keep running that. Keep going. Pete Davidson's father, he says. And then that was his punchline making fun of the fact that a firefighter died and burned alive in the Twin Towers. And look at these people laughing. Even the, even the guy who lost his dad thinks it's funny. Yeah, hold it right there, hold it right there, hold it right there. And, of course, Rob Lowe, and he talks about, Mark Dice talks about how they're celebrating Rob Lowe and laughing about the fact that Rob Lowe had sex with an underage girl statutory rape, but hey, you know, it's Hollywood. That's the least of what happens here, right? But I think that the thing that really hit me in the gut when I watched that was that that guy would laugh about the fact that his dad was roasted 15 years ago. Isn't that sad? Now, we've got an article from The Guardian trying, this, this happened before the, the debacle that we saw with Hillary Clinton uh, passing out, having to be carried away, disappearing for over an hour before they said, okay, it was all right, it, she was just overheated. Well, at the end of the week, we had this little puff piece from The Guardian trying to lift up Hillary Clinton, saying 9-11 tapes reveal a raw and emotional Hillary Clinton. And they say that uh, in August 2003, it was two years after the event, okay, 13 years ago, Hillary Clinton was venting her rage at that time against the Bush administration. And this is what she said. I don't think any of us expected that our government would knowingly deceive us about something as sacred as the air we breathe. <laughs> the air that our children breathe in schools that our valiant first responders are facing on the pile. Okay, Now, I think it's interesting because, yeah, we've had our government knowingly deceive us about a lot. Okay. And they continue to sell us this discredited conspiracy theory that they call the official report. Meanwhile, Jill Stein is calling for a new 9-11 investigation. You see this at Infowars.com. It's a story originally from The Hill. She said, led by families of those who died on 9-11, the American people wanted and deserved a comprehensive, independent inquiry into the attacks, she said in a statement on MSNBC. But here's another one that we have, another article today. Uh, this is from RT, 15 years on. Not even the simplest questions have been answered, says a 9-11 survivor. This guy's name is Rick Santis. Okay, he was interviewed by uh, RT. They say he's campaigning for greater health care. Here's what he had to say. He said, it's outrageous what we have had to go through. 
the wars since 9-11. 57,000 factories have been closed in this country. Five trillion, that's with a T, folks, five trillion dollars have been spent and lost because of this. We've had one illegal war after another. The questions, even the simplest of questions, have never been answered about 9-11, he said. How do buildings with 250,000 tons of structural high-grade steel, four inches thick, collapse at the speed of gravity, accelerating in its speed of collapse as it came down? There's only one way this can happen, and that is by controlled demolition. He said, I lived it. I was there. I heard the explosions. But it seems every time you share this, it gets edited out. He believes the actual death toll is a lot higher than the official tally. He also mentioned that the fire at the site of the Twin Towers burned until March of 2002. March of 2002. Six or seven months. While two weeks after the event, rescue workers actually stopped digging because they were hitting pockets of molten lava. He says, if you read these redacted 28 pages about the Saudi and their official report about the Saudis... He said, there is so much in those redacted 28 pages alone to indict, to prove. He says, since when do you afford sovereign immunity to a foreign country that was just involved in terrorist attacks upon your country that killed tens of thousands, not just the 3,000 that they claimed that day, which I don't believe, as I think it was higher, but those who have died later from their injuries, from their illnesses. And, of course, this last Friday, we had the House join the Senate to say that, yes, victims can sue the Saudi Arabian government. The government that our, our government rushed to uh, get these people out, uh, the bin Laden family, others uh, like Prince Bandar, who had, uh, as we see in these, these uh, missing uh, pages, had actually supported the uh, people financially that they blamed the event on. They rushed them out. And so we've got Obama saying, I'm not going to do that. For the longest time, we had the leadership saying they weren't going to allow people to sue our closest ally the people that they covered up for. And yet, why is that happening? It's happening simply because Donald Trump started talking about missing 28 pages. We talked about it for 15 years. We talked about it. We even had Senator Graham and others who were on the 9-11 Commission saying these pages need to be released. They need to be unredacted. And they still haven't been fully unredacted, okay? But they talked about it for the longest time. Nothing happened. Nobody got any traction on it until Donald Trump talked about it. And when he missed, mentioned the 28 pages, they roared in laughter and derision, calling him deplorable, despicable, detestable, saying he's listening to Alex Jones. And yet it was real. It was real. And he didn't turn around. He continued to look at the secrets. And uh, if you haven't read the fine article that Mikhail Thalen put back out in, in uh, last July 15th, it's time to admit the 9-11 truthers were right. He did a very detailed article. It's something you should go back and take a look at on this 15th anniversary of 9-11. It talks about uh, the Saudi ambassador who funded two of the 9-11 hijackers and so forth and so on. The people who were on the Joint Terrorism Task Force. Go back and take a look at the, the uh, reports about the people who were uh, doing the movie about uh, United Flight 93 saying... Yeah, I was surprised that there was a drill being conducted by NORAD at exactly the same time. Who would have thought? We saw the same thing happen on 7-7 in the UK. It's an ongoing strategy, folks. There's so much we can't talk about because we don't have time. Look at the document.